Hi, I'm Lady Shakespeare, and this is what I hope is going to be a series called Queered Classics, where I play around with some classic fairy tales or romance stories and give them a little queer retelling. Um, so there's going to be some art and some storytelling, um, and I hope you enjoy what I've put together. So for my first go at this, I really wanted to do Cinderella. When you think of fairy tales, Cinderella is like the first one that comes to mind, and it's probably one of the easiest ones to queer up since it's already such a simple tale. I also wanted this one to be about two gay men, since I really like drawing soft boys and I knew I could make it really cute. So this is Asher, my new Cinderella character. Get it? Asher? Like Ash? Like Cinder? Haha. <laughs> I tossed around the name Elliot for a while, but there is actually a children's book coming out this year called Cinder Elliot about two boys and it looks really cute and I didn't want it to seem like I was copying. Um, but yeah, that uh, you should definitely look up that book. It looks adorable. One of the biggest issues with the original Cinderella story is that the main couple fall in love way too quickly. So to fix that, I wanted Asher to work at the royal palace. I think he and the prince run into each other from time to time, and they've become about as friendly as a prince and one of his servants can get. I also think Asher started working there when he was pretty young. Maybe he came from a poor family, and so he had to start working really early. Um, so he and the prince grew up through their teens together, so they know each other pretty well. They even become good enough friends that they have their own special place to hang out in the palace gardens, where they have some privacy from royal and servant life, respectively. So Asher is pretty in touch with his emotions, so he realizes he's crushing pretty early on, but he also knows it's risky to say anything about it. Besides, the prince has to marry a woman at some point, so he wants to focus on the good times for now and push off the bad ones for later. Look, I said he was in touch with his emotions, but that doesn't mean he's actually emotionally intelligent. He's still young, and this is a big crush. Then we have the prince, who I eventually settled on naming Tobias. You'll see the drawing I did of him next. He's mixed and pretty closeted, even to himself. I think he's potentially on the asexual spectrum, like me, so... Also like me, he probably knows he's not fully straight in his teenage years, but until he gets a bit closer to someone of the opposite gender, he doesn't fully understand his sexuality. Though I know that also happens to non-aces, too. There's been a lot of pressure from his dad, the king, to get engaged and married already. He's practically an old man now in his early 20s. But Tobias keeps pushing it off or ruining any engagements his dad tries to arrange for him. Finally, his dad gives him an ultimatum with the ball, which will be held over three nights like the one from the original Cinderella tale. And at this point, Tobias knows he can't push this marriage thing off any longer. The only concession he asks for is that every eligible woman be allowed to attend, not just the noble women. He thinks it's only fair. After all, he's gotten pretty close with some of his own servants, so class differences don't mean as much to him. There's this one servant in particular that's actually really cool. They just vibe together really well. His name is Asher. He's fun, he's goofy, and he has a pretty sweet smile that Tobias just loves to look at for some reason. <laughs> I think he can tell that Asher is sad with this ball coming up, and when he tries to figure out why Asher would be sad about a ball, that's when he starts to realize how Asher feels about him. But again, neither of them can really say anything freely to each other because heteronormativity is stifling. I think they steal one conversation in their secret meeting place in the gardens, and it's here that they kind of talk about their angst around the ball. The prince has no personal motivation to marry, but he has resigned himself to his life as a prince and providing an heir for the throne. But again, he likes to stall when it comes to this romancing women thing for some reason, so he plans to waste time at the ball too. He's made a personal vow to dance with every woman at the ball, literally every person he sees wearing a dress, over the ball's entire three nights, and really drag out making this decision. Whether or not this was Tobias's intention, we'll never know, really. Near the end of the second night of the ball, this whole idea of dancing with anyone in a dress gives Asher an interesting idea. What if he wore a dress to the ball? Then the prince would definitely have to dance with him, right? Huh. That, that would just be crazy. Unless... I mean, Asher's got a smaller build, so he could wear a dress to the ball and blend in with the other ladies. And he's also kind of femme, I think, so he's a little excited to try wearing a dress. Instead of a fairy godmother, I think Asher just has this cool arrow ace friend who works in the palace as a seamstress, 
and she is all for messing with this heteronormative ball. She helps put together a dress in Asher's size and gets a mask to cover his face and obscure his hair, and he looks fabulous. On the third and final night of the ball, Asher gets someone to cover for him so he can strut in and wait for his turn with the prince. Not to romance him outright or anything, but just to have one beautiful dance together before the prince gets married and everything changes. But, as I'm sure you can guess, things don't quite go as planned. As Asher walks into the ball, he realizes he's too late. Tobias is already busy dancing with someone else. And he looks... really happy. She's a beautiful woman, very much the original Cinderella archetype. And Asher watches Tobias smile at her, with these genuine, dazzling smiles. Asher thinks Tobias has fallen in love with her. His heart shatters. He realizes what the rest of his life is really going to be. Him sadly looking on as the love of his life spends his smiles on someone else. Tobias looks up and makes eye contact with him. And to Asher's embarrassment, he can tell Tobias recognizes him, even in his masked disguise. Humiliated, Asher flees from the ballroom floor and doesn't look back. For hours, Asher sits alone out in the palace gardens, back in his regular clothes, too afraid to go back into the palace, or to see Tobias again. He feels ashamed that Tobias's happiness has hurt him so much. If he truly loves him, shouldn't he be happy for him? But the thought just makes him want to cry. The clock tower sings the time. Midnight. The third and final night of the ball is officially winding down. Tobias will have chosen a wife, and Asher will never have another chance to be close to him again. And that's when he hears someone else coming into the garden. It's Tobias. It's then that Asher realizes he's in their secret meeting place. He fled here without even thinking about it. And Tobias left the ball to come looking for him here. Tobias sits beside him, and at first he dances around the subject. But eventually, he starts to confess his feelings for Asher as best he can. It was seeing Asher at the ball, looking so beautiful, dressing up to dance with him, that helped Tobias realize how much he actually liked the thought of dancing with Asher, and how he's somehow fallen in love with his best friend. Tobias then stands and offers his hand to Asher for a dance. He promised to dance with everyone wearing a dress, didn't he? So out here in the garden, under the gentle light of the moon, they share a secret dance together. Asher is flustered at first, and even as he allows himself to be pulled into Tobias' arms, he stutters that there's no music to dance to. Tobias smiles and agrees to fix that. He leans his head in, bringing his mouth closer to Asher's ear, and begins to hum softly. It's a tender moment, and Asher allows himself to hold Tobias closer, never wanting to let him go. After a long while of dancing, Tobias asks how Asher is feeling, and then he asks if Asher would like to be kissed. Asher nods, and they lean in for a secret kiss to end the night. Hey everyone, this bit was recorded after the fact because originally the story ended right here. I felt like it was a pretty soft ending, and I usually like those, and I felt like it finished off both characters' emotional arcs, um, which personally I felt made it the end of the story. Asher got to know that his feelings were returned, and Tobias got to know himself a lot better and know that someone loved him unconditionally, something he never really got from his family. However, I was sadly mistaken. I shared the original version of this video with my girlfriend, and she thought this as the ending was kind of sad. And besides, Cinderella gets her big grand happily ever after, so why not Asher and Tobias? And so, for her peace of mind, and because I don't want to let anyone down who was rooting for these two, I'm going to continue this story. After this moment in the garden, Asher and Tobias have a long conversation about what to do going forward. And I think Tobias is at a point where, even if it doesn't work out in their favor, he wants to come out to his dad and declare his love for Asher. 
At first, the king doesn't understand at all. Tobias's role is to produce children and future heirs, and he can't do that with this boy. But Tobias stands up for himself and Asher. As his father's only heir, he holds a lot of sway. He makes his father promise to allow him to be with Asher, to marry him publicly, without interruption or repercussion. Or else he'll take Asher and leave the country, denying his father any direct heir to the throne. And he asks his father which of those scenarios he thinks will make him look worse. Finally, this convinces his father. Asher and Tobias get married in a beautiful ceremony. Asher wears a fabulous sparkling outfit made by his fairy godmother friend. And the two of them raise three happy children together as the first out and proud gay kings of their country. And they all lived happily ever after. Thank you, love, for correcting me. And I'll make sure to include clearer happily ever afters in all future videos. Thank you so much for watching. This was a fun project to work on, and there's obviously a lot more fairy tales to play around with. I want to incorporate all kinds of identities and also all kinds of time periods. I already have plans for a sapphic Beauty and the Beast video, so hopefully I can get that out soon. If you've enjoyed this video, do all the usual YouTube things. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you subscribed it, and even leave a comment if you commented it. <laughs> I'll be posting my artwork on Instagram and Tumblr at LadyShakespeare if you want to follow me there. I also sometimes do chill game streams on Twitch, also at LadyShakespeare. So if you want to come hang out and play some Sims or Cooking Simulator with me, that's cool too. Anyway, this outro has gone on for way too long. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.